We wrote this book, well, it's a chapbook, and it's also a book that uh, Talon Books is publishing sometime in the future. Um, and I wrote it in kind of uh, an unusual way. So, have you guys heard of Project Gutenberg? Yeah. Yes, some, some people. Okay, so Project Gutenberg is basically uh, an online compendium of public domain texts. So, everything on Project Gutenberg is, there's no longer a copyright uh, in place. And it can be used, it can be republished, it can be remixed, it can be recontextualized. It's basically, for, for me as a writer, it's this incredible open canvas where one can do so many things. Um, so the way, the way Project Gutenberg can, one of the ways Project Gutenberg can be organized is by a genre. And one of the genres that immediately spoke to me when I was searching through the database was uh, the Western novel. So there were, I think there was 81 or 82 freely available public domain pulp Western novels available on Project Gutenberg. Uh, so what I did with those 82 novels was I copied and pasted them all into a single Word document so that I could search them simultaneously. Uh, and it turns out that that Word document was over 10,000 pages long. Uh, and funny story, Word, Microsoft Word stopped counting at page 10,000. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's gotten there yet, but I have no idea that was a thing. Uh, it does. It stops there. So it's somewhere over 10,000 pages. I have no idea how many. And I, I, I wanted to put it all in one place so that I could search it simultaneously, just using, you know, Control F or Command F or what have you. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do that was because I was very interested in the context surrounding certain words and phrases uh, in these novels. So I searched for a whole bunch of words that I found. Um, and one of the words I ended up searching for was the word engine, which is, uh, kind of sounds like engine when I say it. It's not. <laughs> it's kind of like this, uh, kind of like this racial slur that appears a lot in uh, those old Western novels. Um, it appeared 512 times. So there are 512 sentences that all contain the word engine. And I was interested in what I could do with that, so I copied and pasted all of those 512 sentences into another Word document, um, which ended up being 26 pages long, which is far more reasonable. Uh, and I, I printed it out on my printer at home, and I just like, I was looking at the stack of paper, kind of wondering what I should do. And I, I if you guys heard of uh, cups? Basically, a cut-up is, is a literary process in which you literally take scissors and cut pieces of paper or text and kind of rearrange them. So I took each one of those 26 pages and cut it into a short section of a poem. And that poem ended up turning into engine. Um, and I was just... For me, I was just very curious about like what exactly the context was surrounding the use of this word. So this is the poem. He played engine in God's country, where boys proved themselves clean, dumb beasts who cut fire out of the whitest sand. He played English across the trail where girls turned plum wild garlic and strained words through the window of night. He spoke through numb lips and breathed frontier. He heard snatches of comments going up from the riverbank. All them engines is people first, and besides for this buck skin, why we even shoot at them? and seems like a sign of warm, dead as a horse friendship, in time to peddle their eyes, to lean out and say the truth. All you angels is just white keys.
some fearful heap, some crooked swell, bent towards him and produced a pair of nickel-plated polars, a bold winder of dirty tenderness that stiffens into that low brow ice, that dead engine game. He confessed over a pitch fire. Two yards of bright luck hacked through a mangy boil. The antipathy of peaceable hills going crazy over that engine smell downwind from the storm that bucked gold and water right into a ribbon of domestics. Reserve of gas feather camps dusted straight into the big kill. No talk of rain that night, only concern for smoke where fire found a home from a night drop silence that some might consider just part of a dream driven through tent flaps and fared into his eyes, his stained altar of ease straight walking the tick. Faces in their blankets, trigger fingers in their pockets, one straight trail gone district gold and bad as a trace. If they had dreamed of nights, if they had eyes for fists, no free knotted Nevada in the pockets of soldiers or rubbed up engines in the gleam of discovery, engines in a heap, spring boiled over, lanterns buried light against day, old rifle, old trip, the doubt outlasted, just cattle dying, a promise of appetite of one man owned, who slanted their memories on the backs of lids, who grieved on granite without the straight, who squared their minds bearing down on broad stake, who talked the signs through call and country, who kept their dreams in some scraped town, pockets filled with knives they can't fix to a clasp, the two-year-old one eye closed and sideways glancing, a licked glass of jelly bordering an artful territory, a partial engine tongue steady in an old man's fingers, blankets for tender feet. If prayers were tolerable, if money shook like rattlers, trouble now up in the air, concerns over missing knives. After all, if a fella don't shoot, no one man can change him, because a man can be anybody except little. Even snakes are more vital, even bandages wash away. Just the war path, just the all-time disgust, ringing rescue acts for the boys and engines for the knights, all misdeeds at the milk house, all heap shoots by the sagebrush, all the grub is somewhere down in the hungry bellies of drinks, all the dog cries are announced at the back door, all day for a dollar mixing mineral land with the real thing. You can see it for yourself. Let's play engine and clean ourselves off the land. Same old gun-handed business served up on the hunt tracks of strangers. God must love half-caste daughters and the angry race of blue-eyed prospect struck bear tanks that brought their peaceful skin unthinkingly to the summit as the heart of the morning dragged across the sky. Man must track all far-off boots and creep hazard into little squaw talk. That part of sparkling knife love that hates the trouble of rope in the letters of towns. Engines must hang straight black arrows off their shoulders and be thankful and be faithful and be trustful of silver and luck. The day kicks up like a pack of wolves on the cut. Buzzards are fine birds that are fooled by my red skin scent. No keen spirited white flesh shaking trails in the walk light. No leveled rifle in the woods where I slept along towards the day. Back to the bloody gorge, to that mad pale faced settler burning good fellow dead heaps in rattlesnake country. Back to the folks I call brother and sweetheart and such. I see the clear mad stream. Bodies are made from the west. Brave Christian tribes, camps of hostile hunters learning to love, wind fields of work skin tremors chasing the scalp. Black hair frontier, I hear your dead heroes. His burden stalked through the engine grass, his axe whipped scars into dark faces. This half-breed grit carries us 
unwavering into the sledgehammer dawn, into the hollow rampage, into the flagstaff breach with my winter confidence boiling the ambush fate by every fire quickened pace. The abandoned Boonville bank, the Rose Hotel, buckling with shares of white heat trapped in by the lucky bodies of Yuma. A steam hammer play of principles and wariness, an intercourse of title and possession that breaks the fingers of the river and leaves me wild-eyed and exasperated by the mud-sprung sugar.